In this 24th episode of SpaceX in the News, we're going to start things off down in Boca Chica, Texas, taking a look at this last week's progress of the Starship orbital prototype. Then we'll discuss some good news and bad news about Falcon Heavy. Then we'll finish things off by dissecting some upcoming SpaceX missions. Let's get started. Although we haven't heard many headlines coming out of Boca Chica lately, that doesn't mean all is quiet on the shipyard front. The last we spoke a week ago, Starship was in five separate pieces, but now it's down to four. The upper portion of the nose cone has since been attached to a lowered tapered section, and the local SpaceX crew are building what some are projecting to be external support structures. And not only that, as usual, site development has also been progressing. In this picture, taken by South Padre Island Life, you can see on the left side that a new foundation has been laid, but I have no idea what it's for. If you think you do, let me know down in the comments. Here with it zoomed in, you you can see a better picture of the four different pieces of Starship. You've got the nose cone. you got the next tapered section that is probably going to be attached to here in the very near future. Of course, the first section of the main body and the structure it's resting upon, as well as the second piece of the main body. But here's another part they started building just last week. It looks like a second support structure, but this one might be to hold the very bottom of Starship where the engine section will go. Now, for those who don't know, this is the second test vehicle for Starship. Starship being the spacecraft that's supposed to take man back to the moon and hopefully to Mars one day. Now, Starhopper is the first test vehicle and its assembly is already completed. In fact, it already had its first successful tether test a few weeks ago. Its single Raptor engine has since been removed and shipped to either Hawthorne, California or McGregor, Texas for post-firing analysis. So since we haven't had any new information on this vehicle in the last couple weeks, I thought I'd take a minute to speculate on what might be coming our way. We already know from several months ago, you know, back when everyone thought that they were building a water tower and not a rocket, that Elon Musk tweeted that Starhopper would make its first test flight in March or April of this year. And really before Starhopper's original nose cone tipped over in the wind and smashed itself, Elon said that it's possible for Starhopper to fly in February or March. Well, obviously it's mid-April and that never happened, but Starhopper has still gotten about a meter off the ground even though it was tied down. So given these past target dates, and Elon's unyielding desire for progress, I wouldn't be surprised if a Raptor engine was back on Starhopper and ready to fly untethered by the end of the month. Or that could just be wishful thinking on my part. What do you guys think? And speaking of progress, SpaceX definitely isn't slowing down concerning the funding of Starship. After acquiring $500 million from its shareholders since December of 2018, SpaceX has since opened a second $500 million funding round to support both Starship and Starlink projects. Man, what I could do with a billion dollars. Probably not build a rocket. I probably just wasted. Yeah, it's better off in Elon's hands. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to Falcon Heavy. After last week's successful mission of Arabsat 6A, the rocket's center core booster got a little tipsy and suffered a catastrophic fall, like a drunk chicken heels after too much wine. While the booster was making its way back to the Cape on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, rough seas caused one of the legs to give way and one of the hold down chains to break, allowing the upper half of the rocket to tip over in the ocean, breaking off and away from the lower engine sections, which remained on the drone ship. And Elon tweeted the engine seem okay in her pending inspection, but also that perhaps this could have been avoided if the Octagrabber were updated in time. The Octagrabber being this autonomous robot that slides underneath the boosters when they're on the drone ship and anchors them to the platform. You can see in this picture that some of the structures on the lower portion of the center booster of Falcon Heavy rockets are a little bit different and require some modifications made to Octagrabber for them to be able to latch on to the booster. Now the silver lining is that SpaceX never planned on reusing the center core booster anyway. However, they are going to reuse the two side boosters that landed successfully on landing zones one and two. And they'll be reflying those on Falcon Heavy's third mission, STP-2 for the Air Force. This mission will be among the most challenging launches in SpaceX history with four separate upper stage engine burns three separate deployment orbits, and a final propulsive passivation maneuver in a total mission duration of over six hours. The rocket will be carrying 23 spacecraft, including NOAA, NASA, DOD, and university research projects. However, the primary vehicle for this mission is the Air Force Research Laboratory Space Vehicle Directorate's Demonstration and Science Experiments, or DSX. It will be the last spacecraft to jettison, and will conduct basic research on the harsh radiation environment of medium Earth orbit. As of today, STP-2 is scheduled to launch on June 22nd of this year. Well, we got plenty of exciting flights to get to before then. The next one is CRS-17. It's a resupply mission to the International Space Station. Now, this is the launch that NASA invited me to attend, but unfortunately, I decided to cancel because it's a night launch and I'd rather go this summer to the first crewed mission to the International Space Station. And it's a good thing I canceled because CRS-17 was originally scheduled to be over my spring break, but just yesterday they pushed it back to April 30th. So I'm really hoping NASA will invite me back. Now there's a lot of upcoming flights. In fact, a lot of people have been spotting some Falcon 9 boosters in transit on highways lately going to Florida. But yet SpaceX still isn't slowing down. They're still winning contracts. In fact, SpaceX was just awarded a Falcon 9 mission by NASA for an asteroid attacking spacecraft which is so cool. The reason? 
to effectively prove out both technologies and physics that could be used in the future to defend Earth from asteroids known to be on a collision course. So they're going to zoom the spacecraft into an asteroid that's orbiting another asteroid. The reason being is to see if they can at least somewhat knock the asteroid off its orbital trajectory. The impact will be the equivalent explosive force of nearly two and a half tons of TNT. But before the dark craft smashes into the surface, a small CubeSat known as Lysia Cube will deploy two days before to fully exploit the scientific value of DART's demise. It will include high quality photos of the event and the aftermath. It will test out the Nexi ion thruster and power pack propulsive system, as well as the first standalone use of rollout solar array deployment mechanisms. All in favor of renaming the vehicle from DART to Bruce Willis, say aye. Well, with that, I think we're going to call this an episode, but before I go, I just want to quickly inform you guys that I did start my spring break away from teaching today. So over the next week or so, I'm going to be really focusing on growing and molding this channel based on the recommendation and inputs you guys have been giving me the last few months. And actually in the next week or two, I'm going to be sharing some really exciting news with you guys concerning that. So please subscribe, become part of the family. Also hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. Godspeed.